All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Lasting Learning. This week, I am extremely excited to introduce you to somebody that that I'm considering a new friend of mine. I don't know if he's going to say that or not, but I'm claiming it and I'm going to own it and I'm going to run with it. Got a guest on who I've had the opportunity to talk to quite a bit over uh, the last few weeks, and I am just completely in awe of him, his commitment to helping make other people better to just lean into this thing called life and to do life with others. He's a man living his best life in Southern California, but making an impact coast to coast and truly worldwide. Today, we are greeted by the one, the only, I doubt you're actually the one and only Mark Jordan, but you're going to be the one and only Mark Jordan that I have had on this podcast. So Mark, thank you so much for being here today. Wow, Dave, thank you so much, man. I am, I'm, even more excited now to be on the call than I was uh, prior to starting with that intro. So I'm pumped and I do consider you a friend, even though we're, it's relatively new. I'm excited uh, uh, to see where our friendship goes. So thanks for having me on. I'm excited to spend some time with you this morning. Well, that's awesome. Just so you know, most people who would, who know me would say friendships with me only last when they're new, because when people start to get to know me, they start to put up the wall. So the fact well, that you're saying we're friends, people know that means it's a, it's a new relationship here. So so, so Mark, uh, I feel you on that, man. <laughs> so, people that that don't know you very well um, might want to just get to know you right here at the start of this episode. So, can you just unpack who are you? What do you do? Um, just fill in some of those gaps for people. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, I, first I've got to say how excited I'm. This has been an incredible year for me. Our two daughters both got married mm. in 2022. So who I am right now is a very proud father. And I'm really excited uh, about the experience I've had this year and and getting to share that with my daughters and my wife and our new son-in-laws who we're incredibly fond of and and love dearly. So it's been been a great year for us. Uh, Big picture wise, Dave, I've had a a wonderful career in the mergers and acquisitions investment banking world, uh, which has really been a, a blessing to me and a career that I love greatly over the years. I'm the founder and managing partner of a company called Vercor uh, that does middle market mergers and acquisitions work. Uh, and that's been my career. I'm passionate about men. I'm passionate about investing in men. I'm passionate about making a difference in men's lives. And so I started about four years ago, an organization called Unravel Groups, uh, which we'll talk more about later on, I'm sure. But Unravel Groups is an environment that's meant to equip men for leadership and the pursuit of excellence. So I'm spending a lot of time on that right now. It's really my my passion project. We we launched a, a nonprofit earlier this year called Unravel Groups to really begin to scale what we're up to with that. So that's a huge part of my life. I'm married uh, for 34 years and really excited about uh, the the future that we have together. Not only is uh, you know uh, uh, this new experience we have as in laws, uh, which we just celebrated a great Thanksgiving yesterday with. Uh, with our uh, new in-laws and new son-in-laws, which was awesome. So it's a, it's a fun season of life right now, Dave, where we're really getting to reap a lot of the uh, benefits of a lot of the seeds that we've sowed over the years. That's awesome. And first of all, the, the optimism in, in your heart and your head are, are evident because I think I would have answered had I known it, had I had two daughters get married this year, I probably would have introduced myself as a broke man. Um, a man with zero finance <laughs> finances left, and my heart is just completely broken as well. Um, but I love the fact that you look at truly life as as though you're constantly in this acquisition phase. You're constantly absorbing more, and you're constantly yeah. gaining and adding value. Can Can I talk about that piece just a little bit? The, yeah. the idea of mergers and acquisitions. I think that's a it, it, that's going to be a theme of our conversation today because I think it is truly mm-hmm. a testament to to your life and what your life is about. I will speak from a place of, of my own bias. When I hear that somebody, somebody is in that line of work, mergers and acquisitions, I, I picture somebody that's just ruthless and cutthroat, somebody that's out there mm. looking to just take over and, and make it their own. It's almost that uh, Mr. Potter from It's a Wonderful Life uh, mindset mm-hmm. that, I, that I picture in my head, this, this guy that just says, it's all about the bottom line. I don't care about the people. But you strike me as somebody yeah. that's that more focused on the people part of the the process than anything else. Is that a fair assessment? 
Oh, yeah, for sure. It really is. And uh, there's a lot of movies that have certainly created a lot of negative stereotypes of people involved in M&A. Uh, that's for sure. And one of the things that, that I really enjoy about what we do is we work in the middle market. The middle market are, are deals that are typically $200 million in transaction value and below. So it's not the stuff you read about in the Wall Street Journal. Journal. So in those size companies, Dave, you, you, there, there tends not to be a lot of excess labor. You know, every employee that's there matters. So it's really rare in the middle market when you do deals to see any kind of you know, big personnel uh, eliminations uh, that occur in the deal. So that's, it's interesting to say that because that is one of the things that is important to me is the people part, mm -hmm. much more important than, you know, the other aspects of it. So it's exciting to see that in the deals that we do, uh, that's not something that's a common occurrence. It usually creates more opportunity for people, which I really love. Oh, that's good. That's good. So let's take that mindset and apply it to the acquisition of in-laws and two son-in-laws, mm. or you even talk about, so we're recording this yeah. on Black Friday. Thanksgiving was just yesterday. Yeah. And you mentioned having yeah. Thanksgiving now with your in-laws. Thanksgiving in, in my house is filled with tradition. I tend to go mm -hmm. to my parents' house who have done Thanksgiving the same way every single year. The same things are on the menu. My dad has his mm -hmm. assigned seat. My mom has her assigned seat. And when mm -hmm. other people come into that fold, it creates this weird imbalance where I feel like I have to prep people ahead of time for the culture and the established norms. And this is the way that we do things. <laughs> yeah, how, does, right. how does the acquisition of new people into your, your true family work for you? Is that something that you can just handle easily because it's what you do day in and day out? Or is it a struggle for you? Yeah, great, yeah, it's a great question. And there's this phrase that, that we talk about uh, at Unravel and also in my, in my family life as well called progress, not perfection. You know, we're looking to make progress, but we're not expecting ourselves to be perfect. And so progress uh, inherent in that is change. And so we, we try to focus on a family of embracing change and recognizing that traditions are wonderful. Uh, but we have to be careful uh, of traditionalism versus tradition. And mm -hmm. I love this, this quote I read years ago. I can't pronounce the, the philosopher's name, but it was a wonderful quote. And he defined the difference between tradition and traditionalism. Tradition, meaning the living faith of those now dead, with traditionalism being the dead faith of those now living. Now, that's a mm. big statement that we're, you know, I'm, I'm applying to something that, you know, is, is much more sort of personal in nature with families. The point is, is that if you try to enter into each season of life and, and being willing to embrace change and seeing it as an opportunity for more intimacy instead of less, then I think it sets you up for success. And, and we're blessed with these incredible son-in-laws that we're so grateful for, and their families are fantastic. So we've embraced it. In fact, this was a new, a new Thanksgiving for us. We went down to uh, our son-in-laws, uh, his brother and his wife uh, hosted Thanksgiving. So it was their side of the family, our side of the family, both of our son-in-laws and daughters. And it was a wonderful experience that I think was predicated on embracing change and this idea of progress, not perfection, not seeking to keep everything the same that fits in our comfort zone. I love that. And I, I feel like some of that is anti-culturalism right now. It, it is po very yeah. popular in, in on social media nowadays and truly all throughout all media nowadays for people to, to advocate to just accept where we are. And who you are is good enough. And everybody else needs to, to live their life around your circle and your bubble. You don't need to accept change. They need to accept who you are. And, and I hear you saying, no, we all need to embrace this idea of progress over perfection. We all have to embrace this, this growth mindset, if you will, and this quest to, to get better, which has led you to this place of phenomenal success in the business world, but then to also reach out and say, I'm going to help others make the best of who they are to the extent where you, you, you mentioned this unravel a few times, this, this quest to help specifically men make, mm -hmm. make themselves better. So I want to yeah. talk about that mindset for a few minutes, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As a, as a man myself, it is extremely difficult to get myself to a place where I'm willing to have a conversation with another man, especially a guy across the country and say, 
I am not as good as I could be. And I need somebody else to guide me because I'm so used to having to have all the answers. I've got the toolbox. I can fix everything. I don't need somebody else Mm -hmm. to tell me how to get better. Why do you think this is so important for, for men to embrace the concept of progress over perfection? Yeah, it's a great, yeah, it's a great question. And it's a kind of a seminal question that really, you know, it's pervasive throughout all aspects of our life. We, we like to think about it to unravel as you, you have these different areas of your life, your faith, family, friends, fitness, finances, and everything kind of fits within that in some shape, form, or fashion with faith, of course, being the, the, the piece that wraps around all of that and all the other pieces contained within that. And so everyone and every man, myself, everyone, every man today feel stuck in some aspect of their life. They, they feel like they need some directions, but, you know, and it's stereotypical men. Oftentimes we don't like to ask for direction, mm-hmm. right? And it's, but we all know internally when we put our head down at night to go to sleep, there's an area of our life, at least one, and with most of, most of us more than one, but at least one area of our life where we know we need some help. We need some directions. We know that there's more available to us. We know that there's so much more that we could be accomplishing, so much more that we could be up to. So we know that's this this um, real need that men have, right? So we have the felt needs, though, that men experience on a daily basis that run a wide range, right? A, a wide range of emotions that men experience that that help them, that sort of manifest themselves in different ways. And what we're trying to do is to go, okay, you're not by yourself. Every man is experiencing that because oddly enough, even though we all know this intellectually, that every man is experiencing the same thing, it just has a different name to it for their unique life experience. So we want, we just really want men to understand you're, what you're experiencing, we all are experiencing. We would describe it in a different way and it feels different. And we want to, we want to help you in a, an environment, a small group environment to be able to confront those head on to be able to make progress and change. And I just love, I had people invest in me when I was younger, particularly younger in business growing up. And I'm just passionate, uh, Dave, about uh, investing in men and, and helping them see that there can be more for their life. Mm, love this so much. I love this so much. And this is this is how you and I got connected was really uh, yeah. unpacking Unravel and what it's all about. So I, I would like to unravel it a little bit. So when I hear the name sure. unravel, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be talking this very uh, egocentric. It's going to be about me right now as I, as I ask the questions. Sure. And maybe this will answer yeah. some questions for others as well. When I hear unravel, I wonder if I sign up for this, is somebody just going to be literally ripping my life to shreds and questioning every decision I've ever made and making me just shrink down and feel less of a man? Yeah. Yeah. Great question, man. And that's, that's a common question that men have. And understandably, heck, I'd be asking the same question myself if I was getting ready to sign up for it, because I don't know that I want to sign up for something quite like that. But no, the answer is no, emphatically no. And Ravel is really an environment that is, it's meant to be this intersection between or this landing spot between on the one end of the spectrum, you have men's environment sometime that are more emotional experiences. Mm-hmm. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you have some that are more intellectual experiences. And Ravel is meant to land kind of in the center. Yes, there's vulnerability, transparency, there's this emotional connection that occurs. Yes, there's an intellectual aspect to it uh, as well. And it's meant to kind of bring those two things together that really give men an opportunity to explore for themselves, not by having someone else tell them, Dave, you need to fix this, you need to unravel this, you need to grow in this. It's meant through a, a series of books and principles and you know other tools that we bring to the table to teach men to do things like how to have crucial conversations, how to, how to establish a vision for your life, what habits to focus on, things like that. But they get to decide mm-hmm. what's important to them, as opposed to someone sitting over there pointing a finger going, you need to fix this. And men get to be as transparent as they want to or, as, or, or not or, or less as they feel comfortable. Yeah, I love it. It's you know, I, I've talked to to many people before about the difference between coaching and consulting or even the difference between conforming yeah. and transforming. And I used to yeah. be a person who felt my responsibility as a leader was to create other people that looked like me, talked like me, felt like me. I jokingly said I wanted to create itty bitty schmitties in the world. 
And, you know, I, I, I used to hang my hat metaphorically and literally on a quote that was attributed to Michelangelo. When people asked Michelangelo, how did you make that amazing sculpture of David? And his, yeah. his infamous, I'll call it infamous line was, I just looked at that block of stone and chipped away anything that didn't look like David, which I, I heard that. I thought, wow, that is so profound. He saw greatness within that block of stone. But in recent years, I've started to realize, well, actually, that was his way of chiseling away this rock that was already formed, this amazing creation that was already there. And he decided to turn it into something that he saw in his head, which mm -hmm. is the conformity model, where we take other people and say, oh, you're rough. We're going to chisel away all your edges and make you look like we want mm -hmm. you to look. Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing yeah. you say is that the unravel mindset is really about transformation, not confirmation, which is this internal mm -hmm. process, almost caterpillar to butterfly where you get to mm -hmm. look at yourself and say what do i want to make of myself and you equip mm -hmm. people with the skills yep. the mindsets and truly the cohort of others to walk beside them as they take this as far as they want to go is it, is is that accurate yeah it is and another way to say that is this is an environment that men go through together it's a shared experience in a small group environment where first there's this disintegration process that we go through that we're deciding we're we're establishing where we need change in our lives. And then that disintegration process then leads to a, an, an integration mm. process, right? So the, is the goal is to make progress. And it's interesting, Dave, because in the environment, we talk about a lot of the progress, not perfection, because there's this temptation that the minute you start sort of disintegrating or realizing there's aspects of your life that you need to unravel, there's oftentimes shame or there's judgment felt. There's like, oh my gosh, you know, I wish I'd done better and I didn't do as good as I thought I could do. And our, our encouragement for men is when you tackle head on change in your life, there's going to be a temptation to feel shame. And we want to just encourage men to go, hey, not don't let that creep in. Focus on the fact that you're now making progress. You're never mm -hmm. going to be perfect, but you're going to make, be making progress. So I love the way you sum that up and uh, in what we phrase as this disintegration and then integration process that, that men go through. So when, when I think about this, it, and, and I, I apologize, I'm, I'm going to make this as, as blunt as I can just to, to help yeah, me please. Con conceptualize please, this. Yeah. It almost yeah. sounds like an AA meeting for life, right? I, and that's what I picture mm -hmm. in my head, a bunch of guys sitting around in a circle mm -hmm. saying, hi, my name is Dave and I have a problem. And mm -hmm. they, they tell us that the first step is admitting you have a problem. But I'm hearing mm -hmm. you say the first step isn't necessarily even admitting you have a problem, just admitting that you mm -hmm. want to grow. And then you help people mm -hmm. un unravel or discover not necessarily what the problem mm -hmm. is. And I think that's a, a, mm -hmm. a deficit mindset as well, thinking that things are problems. I think we need to recognize yeah. that we just simply want to get better at multiple areas of our life and we can all achieve a betterness or greatness yeah. or whatever we want to phrase it. What would prompt somebody to, to lean into this and say, I feel like this is something for me without, without having to, to have that shame or that guilt or that, that moment in life that just wants them to shrivel up and hide from everybody. Cause I'm afraid that's what happens yeah. with most men when they realize they quote unquote have a problem is they just want to hide. They don't want to lean in and tell everybody else. That's so right. Is, yeah. is this a that's precursor correct. to that? Yeah, that? yeah, that's great. And so what we've done in our environment is men don't have to show up and say, I have a problem. Instead, what they do is they show up and they say, I want to go on a journey, mm. a journey of curiosity. And that what we do, Dave, is we have these, we have a, a multiple different books that we use, a wide range of books that men read, come together and talk about those. And they do it in a way that requires preparation. It requires uh, excellence. And these are all teaching men habits that need to be developed further oftentimes. For men. And in doing that, it's rather than sit down and raise their hand and say, let me talk about all my problems. They get to go on this journey of discovery where they're learning new tools that can step into aspects of their life where they know that are deficient. And then through that, they then are able to see, oh, wow. Yeah. You know what? I'm not, a, I'm not very good at having hard conversations. I'm not good at conflict resolution, as opposed to having to start off on day one and raise their hand and go, I'm not good at conflict resolution, or I'm not good at maintaining relationships. It's, it's really just more this broad picture of this feeling that a man has, that we all have, which is I feel kind of stuck in an aspect of my life. 
Mm. I feel like I need to grow in an aspect of my life. I'm not even sure how to put words around that. Great. Boom. This 12 month environment is a way in that 12 month journey, you're going to learn things that you can grow in things that you're doing great in. That's another big, exciting part of it. It's not all about where you're not doing well. It also gives you more clarity on what you're, what you do great in. We have a whole a piece of the, the environment that is really discovering how you are uniquely gifted so that you can celebrate that and leverage that for your future. Wow. I, lo- I love, I love everything that you're talking about right now for so many different levels. I, I want to attack this in a couple of, different paths that are, they might yeah. seem disconnected, but I'm sitting here taking some notes and I'm going to try to bring them together. So the okay. first time that you and I talked, one of the things that I was extremely impressed by is something that other people might look at and say, Ooh, I don't know if that's the right approach. And I, I, I phrased it in my own head, almost like the, the Marine Corps commercials from the nineties, the Marine Corps <laughs> used to have the, this big ad campaign, the few, the proud, the Marines making it seem like this was a select elite organization that and mm-hmm. in the advertising world, others would look at and say, that is, that doesn't make sense. You want to make sure that you are, you're opening your arms wide and saying, we'll take anybody and everybody. And the Marines said, no, we want to make sure that we are seen as elite so that the best of the best are willing to commit to us. I think about mm-hmm. doctors and lawyers today who have to sign up for years and years and years of not only possible debt, but also college and furthering education to become part of the elite, if you will. Unravel this, this group, this cohort, this, this quest to become better. This isn't necessarily a, a come on in, come as you are, do this at your own pace, at your own leisure type of thing. This is something where there are expectations. There is a commitment to, to follow the, the quote unquote script, to do the work, and then, then you have this, this promise of growth, but people that sign up, you're, you're not, it's not just this wishy-washy thing. It's you're signing up to do the work. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Well said, you know, very few people experience significant life change by themselves. Mm. That's just the bottom line of life that we all know from our own experience. We increase the odds of that success by having men develop in this group on the same journey. So it's a group that provides both accountability and support. And to your point, Dave, you're right. We ha- it's little things like you show up on time. There is no showing up late. You do the work. If, we're reading a bo- if you're reading a book for that month, you don't just show up and go, oh, I like the book. You have to talk about what was meaningful, what your takeaways were. And then if you don't, then we model how to have crucial conversations by being able to say, hey, Dave, you know, man, we're so so uh, uh, grateful that you read the book. Let's talk about the fact that the preparation wasn't there. How can we be better next time instead of reinforcing the mediocrity that happened so many times? So you're right to unravel one, which we like to think of as the equipping environment, is an environment that's 12 months long. And, it, and there's work involved. You're right. It's not just pop in and, you know, say, hey, I'm, you know, I like a book or, uh, I like what you have to say. It's, it's engagement. Engagement's the very important part. Unravel two, we like to we use the word lead to describe that. That's a six month environment to really focus on leadership. And then unravel three, we use the word renew. It's a long term group environment where men can experience ongoing renewal. And one of the things we did recently, Dave, is we we launched a kind of a precursor to unravel one for men who say man, I don't know, a year-long commitment. We only meet once a month, but it's still a year. And then we go, you know, that's a, that's a little long for me. Uh, I'm not sure I want to tackle that. We launched something called Unravel Go. That is a six-week, self-paced, independent uh, environment. That's just you going through an environment six weeks at your own pace. So you can get a little, uh, just a little taste, a little experience to go, you know what? I can see the value of doing something on a long-term basis that has a commitment. And that commitment level that we ask for from them is to model, is to teach them that your word matters. When you say you're going to do something, it's very important mm. that you do it. Mm. Um, you're saying things right now that I know my listeners right now are resonating with for, for various reasons. Mm. Um, when I look at the demographics of 
the people that are listening to this show right now. I know that 65% of my listeners are females, okay? 65% um, are, are women who might be listening to this right now thinking, huh, the, the, the man in my life, my husband, my significant other, my brother, my son, my son-in-law, somebody could benefit from this. But it also mm-hmm. becomes that this weird, awkward conversation now to enter into to say, hey, I think you need to, to you could benefit from a program to become better in something. When I go around and yeah. do some of my trainings with with leadership teams, I ask a question that has become known as the impossible question to answer. And I don't think it's impossible. Mm-hmm. I actually have an answer. But the question I, I present mm-hmm. to them is, what is the difference between nagging and frequent feedback? Is there a difference? Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking mm-hmm. right now of some of the wives that might be listening, some of the moms that might be listening, who are listening to this saying, ooh, somebody could benefit from this, but I don't want to nag them. I don't want to be seen as nagging them. I don't want to be seen as somebody that is trying to identify them and make them feel weak or vulnerable or feel less than. Is there something that they could say Mm -hmm. to encourage the man in their life or the men in their lives to to make this journey with others? Yeah, man, I'm so glad you, you brought that up because interestingly enough, females are, we have an equal amount of traffic to our site from females, male, at least at this mm. point. And the first four years that we spent, Dave, were in testing this and we're finding this in many different ways. It, about half of our, the men that would join, they came to unravel through a female in their life who either a spouse, a friend, a girlfriend, a, you know, a, a someone who cared about them and, and would introduce them to it. So it's interesting you bring that up. That, that's a very important entry point for us uh, at Unravel. And we want to continue to do that. And the reason is because they, they see, females see the benefit that men have gotten from this and want other men to participate in. So the word I think, I love that question, there's between nagging and frequent feedback. And, and the things that we encourage females to do when they want to introduce males to this environment is to think about a couple of different words. One is curiosity as opposed to agenda, right? If it's an overt agenda that, Dave, you need to do this right now because you are a flawed person, that doesn't work so well, right? But if it's curiosity, hey, Dave, I'm I'm curious what you think about this environment that I've come across recently. And the word encouragement is also, I think, a big piece, which is, wow, I'm, I'm, I'd love to encourage you to consider something like this. And then the last word I'd say is permission. In that feedback loop, my, my own personal experience is, is that the more permission you can gain, hey, Dave, are you open to me bringing you ideas like this? Or are you open to me circling back around in a few weeks to get to find out you know, what your perspective was when you went to the website? and read about it. So those are some things that we encourage people that want men to go through this, to just uh, a factor of those words into their dialogue. And when you do that, you come with a much more humble mm. art and humble attitude toward the person that you care about instead of a, you know, you need to do this kind of a mindset. Uh, that's, that's so good. That's so good. And so practical on so many levels, whether it's for this or just for, for any anything in your relationship enter with genuine curiosity because otherwise it's just manipulation and manipulation will never convince somebody to do anything. So at least not long-term and stick with it without bitterness, regret and and anger later on. Yeah. Um, And so as, as we're talking about this, I'm thinking about the fact that the new year is on the horizon. The new year is that time of year where lots of people enter into resolutions, goal setting, hopes and aspirations, Mm -hmm. You mentioned things like like financial wellness and, and fitness and, and faith and family and all, all of these mm-hmm. things that we all look at ourselves and say, we, we can get better at that. There are things that we can improve. And in my house, I have resolutions and goals all over the place. I, I think I jokingly told you before about my whiteboard that I have next to me with my bucket yeah, list and my yeah. yearly goals. And I mean, I that, love it. That, is, that is very real to me. So this is a time of year where yeah. it's, it's natural for a lot of people to say, I want to improve. I, I want to get better. I want to grow. But I also know it's a time of year where some people can fall victim to, to gimmicks, to traps, to, to salesmanship, if you will, the mm-hmm. bait and switch, where you sign up now for 
1999. The mm-hmm. next six months mm-hmm. will change your life. And then we're going to get you in for life for a thousand dollars. Right. And <laughs> people fall for that all the time. Can you tell us real quick what it takes to, to sign up for this? What is the commitment that people are making and in investing? Yeah, it's interesting because that's a tension that we're always trying to manage, even on Unravel, because Unravel, there is no cost. And interestingly enough, say that again, that there, there is no the- cost. There is no cost. It's wow. something that we are committed to giving free to men to be a part of. We 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 uh, uh, unravel. It's funded through uh, tax deductible donations, or at least eligible tax deductible donations. We're a five hundred one c three, and we have donations that fund our operating costs and fund this environment that we provide for men. So there is no cost. And interestingly enough, Dave, that that creates a tension point because oftentimes people go, "Well, if it's free, there must not have that much value to it," as opposed to $19.99 a month or, yeah. you know, subscription services they, that, that they could do. So it, it is an interesting challenge to that we're constantly, but, but we're committed to this being an environment that there's no cost. It's, there's a big commitment that men, um, uh, you know, uh, engage with in this environment. And we don't want them to also have to have this barrier, barrier to entry of also having to, you know, pay money to do it. And we feel good about our uh, the donations that we receive and the people that support Unravel and, and kind of where we're at in that piece. And we we encourage men to think in terms of busy. You got a lot on your plate. It's a new year, making a lot of New Year's resolutions. But imagine yourself one year, five year, 10 years from now without the life change that you need. Mm. And then we encourage men to think about this. To your point is this. When has anything in your life that's been significant? come without some cost and that cost usually is time or effort so these this idea that we can pay you know 19.99 and our life's going to be changed in 30 days or we're going to get rich in 60 days right it just it it bumps up against our own life experience we can look at our own life experience in the past and know life doesn't work that way there always is required some either a monetary or a time commitment, and it's it's significant. And so at Unravel, we've said, hey, we don't want it to be a monetary commitment. We want it to be a time and energy commitment that you're going to have to make. And if you're not doing engaged in something that requires that, it's probably not going to require the the kind of return on investment that you're looking for. Yeah, it, whether you're you're thinking about doing a couch to 5K, training for a half marathon, a marathon, yeah. it, you might not necessarily have to pay a registration cost or $1,000, That's but right. you're still going to have to get off the couch and do the work to get yourself in that same kind of shape. And I think we, we've become this society that is, everything has to be the drive through. It's this fast food mindset where I, I just want to mm-hmm. pay something now to get the quick return tomorrow. I need to invest in Bitcoin so that I can get the quick return. I need to go find the NFTs, right? <laughs> right, right. Everybody's yeah. looking for the shiny new Pokemon card or the, the mm-hmm. unicorn in, 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 as opposed to saying, no, let's just double down and do the work that we know works. And uh, there's yeah. something to be said when the when it's it's led by people who have the life experience to say, listen, I've made the mistakes, but I've also come out on the other side. Is, is it is it appropriate for people to think that unravel is truly Mark's story. It's your, it's your, the re, the resources that you've accumulated throughout the years that you're trying to, to instill in others, or is it the stuff that you wish you had had in your journey? Oh yeah. Great question. I, I, I it's both of those and a third element. So l- let me, let me expl- uh, uh, explain it this way. So first, I look back, I even think about the word curiosity that we talked about earlier. I look back on my life as a younger parent, a younger friend, a younger businessman, and I wish I'd had more curiosity. Mm. I really do. So yes, it is as I look back. And then I think about things right now in my life, and I think about men that invested in me when I was younger. I think, wow, I'm so grateful for that. I want other men to have that. So that's a piece. The third piece is think about all the people out there who have who are doing incredible things for uh, for men's environments and all the ones that i've been a part of in the past and i think about okay men those are incredible there's a lot of people doing a lot of good things what can i take from those to incorporate in my own life experiences those that i wish i had done better in those that i completely missed the mark in and those that i 
hit the mark a bit because I had men invest in me and, and, and teach me things that, uh, that were helpful and then wrap all that together. And then the last piece that's sort of infused in it is this, Dave. I think back to my own life in, in group environments. And I think about all my friends, when we're all transparent and vulnerable and we're talking, we'll go, I haven't really been a part of that many in my life that I really went, wow, this was incredible. And I wanted to continue on like in a, mm. a long-term fashion. So I took all that in and said, oh, what would it have to look like? What would it look like for a man to want to be in something? And when he was finished, be so feel so transformed and be so excited that he would want more. And those, all those ingredients kind of wrapped up together is what Unravel is about. Wow. Sign me up. Sign me up, right? <laughs> I, 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 think, I think that, that, that that's powerful. That's powerful. We, in this, this day and age of, of Pinterest and Instagram and social mm -hmm. influencers, there are a lot of us that resonate with what you just said. We see the snapshot, we see the image, and we say, I want that. I want to get what that person has. But we tend to think that we can do it by buying the merchandise, by buying the swag, by shopping at the same mm -hmm. stores, by putting on the facade or the makeup, as opposed to exploring who we are to figure yeah. out where we need to go. It's not it, it, what I just heard is it's not Mark saying, I want to make sure everybody else can become who I am and sit in my seat. No. It's you want yeah. everybody to be able to look themselves in the mirror and say, who am I? And to your point, who do I want to be looking at in five years? Who do I want to be looking at in 10 years? Yeah. You know, what steps do I need to take to get there? It's the mirror, not necessarily the Instagram photo that people are chasing. I, I love that so much, so much. Yeah, yeah, well said. And I, I, and I, I think back too to this idea of the journey, you know, and, and for me, when I was younger, again, as a parent, as a husband, as a friend, as a businessman, I, I spent way too much time thinking about the destination. Mm. Not to imply vision and mission and goals aren't important. They are. Those are, are crucial. And, and that's a part of Unravel, having a life vision statement uh, that, that we uh, help me in craft. But the journey, just being on the journey and, and understanding you're on a journey is equally important because along that way is where you learn and grow that then prepares you for the next chapter. Yes. Yeah, and I don't want to say that life is a game at all, but in this holiday season, I love sitting down and just playing board games with my family. Not so that I can win, yeah. but so that I can sit down and spend time in that journey of in the process with them all and experiencing the laughter and the inside jokes and and all of those things in the moment. Because there, there's no trophy for winning the the board game when you're sitting on with your family, but it's the the experience is unmatched. And I think that's what life is yeah. all about. Life is, it's what you just described. It's all those memories. It's all of those things that you can unpack so that you can constantly get better. You want to continue to unpack things and grow things and uh, eventually have fewer road bumps in front of you than you had in the past. Um, but it's up to you to figure out where you're going to go and how you're going to get there. That's so good. Yeah. So, so Mark, I, I, I ask this question to every guest that I have on here. And I'll slow play this a little bit in case you need some time to process and figure out what you're going to say. But I ask everybody, okay. I ask everybody to imagine that the world is listening to this because they okay. are. I can imagine this episode is going to have 8 billion listens and 8 billion downloads <laughs> because it's just, it's that good and so needed and so powerful. Um, well, let, let's maybe 7 billion. There might be some developing countries okay, that okay, don't have yeah, the yeah. bandwidth yet. So I, like that. I, like I, I don't that. want to yeah, set yeah. you up to, for, for failure. Okay. Yeah. So, but let's just say there's a lot of people listening and they, okay. they're, they're just completely riveted by by your words but they know that this conversation is not going to go on forever you've got that microphone in your hand and you're just about to drop okay. it and walk off the stage the thunderous applause from seven billion people i'm curious what would you want that mic drop moment to be for you that that thing that you leave people with before you walk off the stage with a lot of swagger and confidence knowing that their lives are going to be better Wow, I'm I'm liking that word picture, man. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm loving the idea of standing up there with seven billion people. Oh wow, that's a great question. Um, I think I would say you can have almost anything you want, but you can't have everything you want. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. 
now, now I'm kicking myself for saying that that's like towards the end of this, because you just set me up with like 15 <laughs> more questions, but it, it just expound on that a little bit for me. So that, yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay. I think, yeah, I really think that uh, permeates every aspect of our life, mm -hmm. that, that really high level principle. And so let's just take a really sort of simple example to illustrate generally people think would think about that, like in an economic sense materially so let's use a, an easy example for that like maybe i have maybe i want a, a new car i want to take a nice trip uh you know i want to eat out every day i've got these lists of things that i want to do that mm -hmm. require a financial cost associated with them most people try to have everything because they don't understand this principle of you can have almost anything but not everything so the point is you have to prioritize in your life and develop the discipline to recognize you can't have everything. And almost anything, of course, of course, is relative to where you are in your season of life, your economic season of life that you're in. But whatever season you're in, whatever you have economically, there's a lot that you can have. I mean, you just, most of the things you can, you, can, you can get, certainly, that you need. And I'm throwing out the outliers in this, of course. So... You have to learn to prioritize and go, you know what? I think I want that, that new car, but that means maybe I'm not going to have that nice trip or I'm not eating out every day or I'm not sending my kids to private school, whatever the case happens to be. You get to prioritize that, okay? The same thing applies in relationships. You know, you have to decide what's important to you in relationships because you can't have everything. Mm -hmm. There is no perfect person in a relationship, but you can have almost anything you want if you care enough to put forth the effort in the relationship. So I, I really found that principle as I've, uh, over time as I learned to embrace it more and understand it more and to learn to prioritize what's important in life, then it helps you avoid and me avoid the comparison trap of going, well, wait, mm -hmm. man, that, they posted a picture of that wonderful trip. I got to have that. No, Mark, you and your family chose to prioritize something else. And I'm okay with that and allows me to come back to a focal point uh, that allows us to make better decisions in our faith, our family, our friends, fitness, finances, all that stuff allows us to make uh, better choices in that regard. Wow. That, first of all, you're the master of the mic drop because I'm, I'm not going to take that <laughs> quote. You can have almost anything, but you can't have everything. I feel like I'm going to go in now and I'm going to change my Instagram profile to have that quote on it. I'm going to change the background on my phone to have that. So that every time I pick up my phone and I'm finding myself in that comparison game, I have to read those words first. Oh, yeah. that's good. And maybe I'll pull out the expo yeah. mark and write it on my bathroom mirror too. Mm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, you can't, and it, it helps remind us that we, it's, it's not even a healthy place to be to think that we can have everything we want. We have to learn to say no yeah. to lots of different things in our life so that we can have better things in yeah. our life. Yeah. The, the greatest example of a focused leader is the one that can say no. Love it. That's so, right. As, yeah. as, as people are hearing this and are, at, are in that place of curiosity, that place where they just say, oh, this is just scratching the surface now. And I feel like I need to know more, whether for themselves yeah. or for somebody else. Where can they get more information? Where can they learn more either about you, or about Unravel, about signing up for, for any of those things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I'd love for those six billion people right now <laughs> that, are, that are out watching you to go. That's easy. Unravelgroup.com. That's our website. Unravelgroups.com has everything there, ability to sign up, whether it be Unravel Go, Unravel One, and also information about Unravel and who yeah, we're about. Yeah. We've got FAQs there. We've got uh, uh, information about the leadership team that's there. Everything's there that a person could want to go, and everything is contained on the website. So that's where we'd love to see people visit us, unravelgroups.com. Love it. And for those people willing to go the extra mile and do the work, it's actually in the show notes. So all you got to do is click the show notes, which I know most of you don't read. You just want to listen. <laughs> Feel free to, to bookmark this, save it. If you're driving to work, if you're on vacation right now, you don't need to click those buttons as you're driving. But remember, when you get where you're going, click the show notes and you'll take you right there. Love it. Mark, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy uh, schedule right now, um, leaning into to me, helping grow me, make me better, as well as so many people uh, around the country and around the world. I, I appreciate you. And I just, I celebrate your mission and all that you're up to. Yeah, Dave, thank you so much, man. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed 
our the new friendship we're developing. I've enjoyed the time we've spent up to this point connecting. We've always had great dialogue, and this has been no exception. I've really enjoyed it, man. It's just been it's been life giving for me, and it's been fun just to just to kind of talk about uh, you know what's what's happening at Unravel and what I'm up to, but also just it's it's fun to see you in this venue, this environment. Uh, it's cool. You've, you've, you're you're up to some exciting stuff, Dave, and I'm just excited to be a small part of it. Love it. I'm so glad I was still recording as you said all that. So do you hear that people? Yeah. He said, he said, I'm doing all right. So I'm going to take it. Love it. <laughs> all right. Well, everybody f- feel free again, follow, follow Mark, uh, learn more about him, sign yourself up, have that conversation with somebody else, enter a conversation with serious curiosity and encourage others that they can continue to get better on this journey that we call life. <laughs>